Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel Psyche Patshala, your study companion to learn psychology online. In this video, we will be discussing about forgetting and its causes, how to improve memory or the mnemonics techniques. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we upload next. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. So let us start discussing about memory. Forgetting, as defined by Mann, is the loss that can be permanent or temporary of the ability to recall or recognize the information that was learned earlier. To discuss about the cause of forgetting, the first cause that was proposed was decay or disuse of information. According to decay theory, the information that is encoded or stored in our long-term storage if not rehearsed occasionally, is lost from the long-term store. According to this theory, memory is the function of neural networks and the bond between them. And due to the disuse of that particular memory, the bond or the strength between the neurons or the network is weakened and the information is harder to recall later in life as those connections or networks are not easily activated. According to the interference theory, encoding of information or retrieval of information is inhibited by additional information in the environment. Interference can be of two types, retroactive interference and proactive interference. For example, if we are studying chapter 1 and chapter 2, consecutively and while studying the chapter 2, we are unable to remember the information that we learned in chapter 1, then the information of chapter 2 is inhibiting the memorization of chapter 1. This is known as the retroactive interference in memorization. In the other way round, if the memory of chapter 1 is affecting the memorization of chapter 2 or it is harder for us to remember the chapter 2 because of chapter 1, the interference would be called proactive interference. If the topic of chapter 1 and chapter 2 are very similar, the rate of interference will be very high and if the topic of chapter 1 and chapter 2 are dissimilar, the rate of interference will be very low. The next cause is encoding failure. It is believed that the information that we are unable to remember has not been encoded in the first place. If we are not properly attending to a particular topic for encoding or memorization, that information will be lost from our short term memory very easily and will not be a part of the long term memory. In this case, the forgetting occurs because of encoding failure. If the information is not retrieved from the LTM due to lack of cues in the environment or lack of association, that is known as retrieval failure. In this context, the tip of the tongue phenomena is very popular. Tip of the tongue phenomena is a classic example of retrieval failure. Tip of the tongue phenomena occurs in a very personal and emotional situation where we know that we have that information in our memory stored but we cannot actively recall that information. Suppose you want to say a particular word but that word is not coming to your mind but you know what that word means and you know that word is very much associated with the current situation but you are unable to remember that word from your mind. You can come up with the words which sound similar to the words 
or you can come up with other words that have similar meaning to the word but you cannot remember the exact word that you are trying to use. This is known as the tip of the tongue phenomena and it is a classic example of retrieval failure. How to improve memory? This has been a question that was asked for a long period of time. Psychologists have come up with certain methods that can help us improve our memory. These methods are in all together known as mnemonics. The first method that we will be discussing is known as method of loci. Loci is a Latin term which means location or position. In this method, we can remember information related to location or places like where a particular object is in our bedroom or in our bathroom or in our living room or in our area. Whenever the information is asked to us, we can navigate in our mental map of the entire area or the layout of our home and can tell which object is where. Through this method, a particular item that you want to remember or recall can be remembered like learning a particular topic of subject sitting in a particular corner of the house and whenever we go to that particular corner in our own mental map, we can easily recall what topic we had learned over there. The next method is pegword method where information is learned or remembered through rhyming. For example, one is a bun, two is a shoe, three is a tree. This is how the words bun, shoe, tree can be remembered in our memory easily. Maybe that is why we can easily remember a song or a poem for a longer period of time than a particular passage or paragraph. The next method is initial letter strategy. In this method, the entire long sequence of word can be reduced down to an initial letter to use that initial letter as a cue to remember the longer version. For example, UGC is an abbreviation of the term University Grants Commission. It is somewhat difficult for a person to always remem remember University Grants Commission but it is easy for that person to remember UGC in short. The U for university, G for grants and C for commission. The next strategy is narrative chaining. For example, if you are given a list of items to bring from the store like bread, egg and butter. It is difficult to remember the items in an isolated way. But if we can form a particular sentence or narrative using these words, it is easier for us to remember. Like, I like to have butter on my bread and eat it with eggs. This is a very easy to remember sentence because it has association in it. And in this way, we can remember the items that we need to buy from the store easily. The next method that we will be discussing is known as PQRST given by Thomas and Robinson. The PQRST method by Thomas and Robinson can be explained with an example. Suppose you are preparing for a test or an examination that you have to give in your semester. In PQRST method, first you go through the contents of the book which is preview. This is the preview stage of memorization. You go through the entire content and you see what are the things that you need to learn. Then you start formulating questions that are relevant to a particular chapter and then you ask yourself that question. To answer that question, you go to that particular chapter and read that chapter and find out the answer from there. After figuring out the particular answer for a particular question, you do self recitation that is consistently repeat that information in your mind and add additional information to it. And then eventually take a test where you have to remember that 
answer and write it down. So that phase is known as test. This is the PQRST method given by Thomas and Robinson.